Ngāto Roirangi is an ancestor of Ngāti Tūwhare Tō. We are his descendants. All the resources that the whenua provides are seen as taonga. Traditional use of the geothermal taonga has come about through centuries of interaction. Part of that interaction is caring for the taonga. Each hapu has a right to look after the geothermal resource to hand on to future generations. Fun fact, geothermal energy has been used to turn your lights on for the last 65 years. My mum and dad and my sister came to Wairake in 1966. The construction of the Wairake geothermal power station was happening at that time. So dad was offered a job here at Wairake. Because I, I grew up with the power project, I've seen changes in the environment, changes in the geothermal surface features, and this is due to the extraction of steam from out of the ground. For many years, the geothermal industry in this area went without the participation of tangata whenua, and of course, tangata whenua didn't see any benefits in terms of how their lives are made better. Myself and, and my whanaunga, my, my relations, wanted to make an actual difference. We wanted to be part of the solution. I was offered a place in Contact Energy to inject tangata whenua values within the company. Quite a complex looking steam field. There's a lot of pipe everywhere. It's got a kind of a sci-fi vibe to it. The thing I would really love for people to know about geothermal is just what a contribution it makes to New Zealand's energy needs. We're really blessed to have such abundant natural resources to make use of in New Zealand. There are places in this area where you can go and push a thermometer into the ground and it will be 100 degrees C at just 30 centimetres down. It's a really unique environment. It's something that's very special to a few places in the world. I'm just Mike. That's cool. Stuff like that. <laughs> in this area of New Zealand, we have a number of volcanoes that never quite made their way through to the surface. Geothermal is rainwater that's been heated under the ground for a period of time, and that rain permeates down, gets heated by that hot rock, and then rises in a buoyant column. We separate the geothermal steam from the water, and we pipe the steam to a power station. The geothermal steam runs through the steam turbine, that spins the turbine, drives the generator, makes the power. Most people won't know what I'm actually talking about, so as long as I sound smart, that's OK. When the Wairaki Power Station was built in 1958, the context for thinking about the environmental impact was really quite different than it is today. The steam and water was being separated in the steam field and the water was being dumped into the river. This had the effect of heating the river and also contaminating the river with hydrogen sulphide, which is geothermal gas that dissolves into the water. So it needed a, quite a bit of that innovative thinking and we had to find a different solution. It was important for contact to go that path. Tangata Whenua needed a way to become better kaitiaki, or stewards of the resource. We did that in a number of different ways through mitigations with contact energy. In 2012, we installed a bioreactor to improve the condition of the water that was being returned to the river. These are bacteria that naturally present in the river system. Those bacteria will eat up 98% of the hydrogen sulphide as the water trips through the bioreactor. You've got to think about how the community is going to be able to relate to something. How does it affect other people that are around it? And that's the part that I feel most proud of. Ready, eh? It's a go. <laughs> <laughs> something that gets me, you know, coming to work is doing projects which are going to bring value back to the community, and particularly here at Ohaki, where the power station here is on Ngāti Tahu land. So doing something here that will create jobs, that will create added value in the community is a key driver. 
Geothermal is a renewable energy source, but it's not carbon neutral. We do have CO2 emissions, or CO2 and, and methane emissions. It comes from the deep magma, which is the heat source for our geothermal system. So at the moment, food packaging are heavily dependent on carbon dioxide. The beverage industry, the food industry. Our sources, that comes from natural gas. And then the rest we're importing. So the carbon footprint of that CO2 is quite astronomical. Can we do something with these emissions here, get them to a beverage grade standard and make use of them? We will be able to harvest CO2 here, which we think will satisfy the bulk of the current New Zealand market. The more we can move away from being reliant on fossil fuels for these sort of things, the better. Traditional use of the taonga through cooking and those types of things, these resources make a better life for the people. My whānau's journey, it's actually quite intergenerational. I think bringing on board Māori values actually plays into what they're all about themselves. That's all part of the philosophy of our team. The main thing I really want to achieve at Contact is a way of doing things that can continue after I'm long gone. And I was the last person to find out that you were coming. I just, we just didn't want anyone to think that you'd given me a job, given me a handout. <laughs> yeah. I was fortunate they, gave me, they did give me the right of veto at the end of the process. Did yeah, they? I didn't know that. <laughs> Geothermal energy is very unique from a worldwide perspective. Those that work at Wairake and within the geothermal industry, they believe they're making a difference to the world in terms of climate change. And I hope that the technologies and ways of doing things improve as we go on.